Hi, and welcome back to this very massive video uh, of Crash Course on Clinical Trial Coordination and Management. We're here for part nine, talking about reporting to your pharma sponsors using different formats. So there's lots of different things you might need to report. Something major might have happened. Uh, all of your kits might have been damaged or something like your fridge malfunctioned and all of your frozen biological samples just got destroyed before shipping. There's always different things that can go wrong, but there are two very standard things that you should be familiar with. So the first one is called a PD, a protocol deviation. And the second one is called AE or SAE, which is a suspected adverse event or an adverse event, also known as side effects. So these two usually have pretty standard forms that you can either prepare or it can be provided to you by the pharma sponsor. A PD or protocol deviation form has to be filed whenever you are deviating from the protocol. It's pretty self-explanatory. You are given a protocol, like for example, visit one, patient is supposed to come in, you're supposed to do this blood work, you're supposed to do ECG, you're supposed to give the drug, you're supposed to send them home. But something went wrong. Patient refused to do something or a patient was in too much pain, so you couldn't continue with the procedure. Lots of things can happen. Either case, it will still result in a protocol deviation because you are moving away, you're deviating away from what was in the protocol. A lot of the time it's fine. Sites have to make these decisions on site. It's urgent. You're like, you know, you might make the decision or you might take it to the investigator and she or he or they might make the decision and say, no, we can't proceed, just sign a PD and I'll sign it because I'm not going to hurt this patient anymore. You know, continuing with this procedure is too painful for them, whatever the reason is. So in that case, as a trial coordinator or a trial assistant, you might have to file a protocol deviation form, kind of listing what time it happened, what date, what, what the incident was, how you resolved it, what the chain of decision making, the rationale was, and what's going to happen the next time, how are we going to like... Is there any alternate solutions to these things like that? Um, the other thing that we want to understand about reporting to them is adverse event and severe uh, suspected adverse events. So once again, adverse events might happen instantly during a visit. You're like, oh my God, patient is like, can't breathe. Patient is flushed. Patient is suddenly starting to vomit. Patient have, has having a reaction with the drug. Maybe it's going in an IV or it's an oral drug and immediately patient has an allergic reaction. So some adverse effect can happen instantly in front of you, but adverse events, like I was saying in previous parts of this video, they can also happen um, when, so they can also happen when like, maybe you're doing blood work and your PI notices that every time they get the drug, their liver enzymes are high, the renal function test is bad, and then after a month they recover. But then again, whenever they get a drug, their kidney function and you know, there's some hepatotoxicity or renal toxicity or something like that. So in those cases, they can also be adverse events. Sometimes maybe you won't even know, you'll hear the patient bef between two different visits, you find out like, oh my God, the patient has been hospitalized. Maybe it wasn't like, you know, you weren't the primary caregiver. They went, ended up going to the ER. That's also an adverse effect. These are all suspected adverse effects and it's the PI's decision, the investigator's decision to kind of decide if it is related to the drug, unrelated to the drug, clinically relevant, clinically irrelevant. That's not your job, but your job is filing these documents, filing these reports, being very good with your documentation. And a lot of them are very time sensitive. Not only do these PD and SAE forms have to be filed to the pharma sponsor, they might also have to be filed to your local ethics department. Some of them might also need to be filed to the regulatory authority, especially if it's like a proven adverse event reaction. In that case, it needs to be filed to Health Canada, FD or whoever, like, okay, you have shown that this drug is causing this reaction in this patient population and it's pretty sure that it's being caused by the drug. So be very, you know, ask the right questions, find out if, you know, who you need to report to in what day. Sometimes the regulatory authority has a seven day window or a 15 day window by which time they have to be informed, but the pharma sponsor and the ethics need to be informed within 24 hours or three days. So there's a lot of formats, but just be very familiar with these two terms, the protocol deviation and the suspected adverse event forms. Done. So that was it for point number nine in this crash course video. I will see you in the next video when we discuss handling and shipping. Bye.